Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint the beautiful light purpley blue flower, the Scabiosa. It's one that features so regularly in the wedding bouquets that I paint, but I've never painted it on YouTube before so I thought it was high time. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right then, so we're doing some good old flower painting, how lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to first draw in some tangly stems. Um, and uh, yes, the stems of scabiosis are lovely, long and languid, rather poppy-like in their sort of quirky bends. And then what I'm going to do is place in a little disc, either sort of rounded or on a, on a bit of an angle. There we go. Which will help us just sort of anchor the petals and where the where the centres are going to be. Now I've just got my bloom brush set out. These are going to be really handy today. Um, so the bloom brush set features a filbert brush, which is this where it's 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 flat, but it's got this very curved pointed edge. And then two one-stroke brushes, flat-headed, just getting them nice and wet. With these larger brushes in particular, you've really got to make sure they're nice and wet and soaked before you start with them, just to make sure that they're going to carry the water really well. So this set is available in my shop, and it's, well, it's a really good set. I only ever sort of create new brush sets when I'm suddenly very much impressed and feel like I'm in need of these in my set. So the other thing you always need though is a good old large pointed round brush to be your mixing brush. So let's get Imperial Purple woken up. Um, but Scabiosa is actually quite a bluey purple. So I'm going to be using Cobalt Blue Deep. And mix in Imperial Purple just to get that lovely sort of indigo colour. They're a very, uh, they're a pale purple so we want to work with quite a diluted colour in our palette. And the petals have got a really sort of frilled edge. We're going to begin by using this small one stroke brush and I'm really excited to show you how I'm going to use it. So get the brush really coated in paint and I'm going to begin with this one and I'm just sort of scribbling the brush down really it's really pale it's it's not a lot going on but if I am fairly um, sort of irreverent I suppose with the brush we can get these lovely sort of rather um, torn edges of the piece and I'm going to just continue to do it on the other petals as well. So you're always looking for a brush that can sort of do what you want it to do in not too many brush strokes because watercolour always benefits from not being messed about with too much. And that's why, you know, we could achieve this with a um, with a pointed round brush, but sometimes actually we can get it just that little bit faster with a different type of brush. And that's why I've gradually, over the years that I've been teaching you, started using these different brushes. Okay, as this starts to slowly, slowly dry, we're going to introduce a bit more concentrated colour. So we've just allowed about 10 seconds more drying time just to let these settle in just a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to create a little bit of sort of light and shade, being mindful of the fact that 
the centre of the flower is often where I end up painting in the shadowy corners but right now I'm using this colour to just create just little bits of light and shade on the petals and having left it just that little bit of time it means that it's going to just bleed in but not sort of completely bleed in without any uh, leaving any trace You can always add in an extra little petal here or there, one sort of just tucking in behind. The other thing I would always recommend is, is if you can have the real thing in front of you, then that is going to help so much. Okay, so this is starting to look really nice and it's just slowly drying all the time. The centre of the flowers is a greeny, yellowy colour. Um, they're little sort of tiny little balls and so we are going to need a more detailed brush at this stage because whilst it continues to dry I'm going to include a little bit of this um, green gold in there and you can see just by sort of placing in a few little dabs in that central circle we can start to build the scabiosa flower. I'm only sort of doing it on the, the top half of the circle because I want to show you another little trick we can do. You can see this first one I painted definitely had more water on the brush because if it's the first one and yet it's still the one where the colour is travelling the most when I put it on the page. It's an interesting look at just the quite strong difference it can lead to when you're using different amounts of water on the brush. So we're just letting this all slowly sink in. This is a really great sort of mindful practice, I suppose, of watercolour flower painting when you're just allowing the petals to just sort of soften in and, and slowly dry on the page. But there's actually really quite a lot of moisture still there. OK, now I'm going to take a size two pointed round and I'm going to come in with a little bit more control. What I want to do is I want to give the impression of a few petals that have actually sort of ruffled upwards and are concealing that central area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little bit of sort of darkness around there which is creating therefore a sort of a petal shape that's just frilled up you see um, and I will continue to just use this this brush to scribble I suppose and in using now the slightly drier page I can start to actually define a few of these petals So you see this one that's sort of come, crept up here, we're also going to see underneath it. So it's going to create that shape sort of underneath it so you can see that curved, curved edge.
and adding a few little strokes to the ends of the petals as well does start to bring them just that little bit into focus as well. So I'm just going to sort of tentatively start adding in little bits of just slightly more concentrated colour with my size 2 brush and slowly we will build up this beautifully delicate flower. So I'm just sort of, yeah, scribbling in And that is sort of gradually creating petals and layers. But then I'm going to go right down to my four tenths and we can create a lovely little sort of little sort of petal scribble shape like this. And then quickly with a clean wet brush, soften that outer edge. And stretch it out and all of a sudden you've got yourself another little sort of layered petal on the inside so clean wet brush and just taking the outside edge of that hard line there and creating a new little petal it's um, this style of painting definitely takes a bit of sort of almost thinking ahead, I suppose, seeing which petals you want to create and then almost sort of painting the, the negative space around them. So what I've got, I've got these little petal shapes here and this one sort of in the front here, sort of like floating clouds almost. And we want to give them just a little bit of help to really define them. So that's why I've gone down to my smallest brush now and I'm going to use my brush to help sort of create that bit of texture that also reminds us where the petals are anchored in to the middle and that is so important when painting sort of loosely like this, just make sure you keep on angling those little dashes and lines into the petal. Into the petal, into the flower, into the centre of the flower. And then we've got one that's sort of curled up here, so I'm going to just create a bit of darkness underneath it. And then a little bit of sort of curved dashes around the edge so we can see that it's sort of curled up this one too we'll create a bit more color there and just with a clean wet brush bring it down it's a delicate little balance but suddenly before your eyes you suddenly see these petals appear I think it's got similar levels of challenge to um, uh, peonies, maybe. But I think just keep your eye on the centre of the flower at all times. Keep thinking about how those petals are anchored in to the centre. It might be the best thing to watch this tutorial all the way through, 
first before having a go at painting it yourself. Watch it, enjoy it, then get your kit together and have a go. Whilst we let all of that dry, we can paint in our stems. Now the green gold um, needs just a little bit of sap green to get the stem colour. And the rigger brush is brilliant for this. What I like to do is sort of two parallel lines, which sounds like a tall order, but honestly with the rigger brush, It is just wonderful. And then a little bit of the sap green on your brush with your four tenths. And you can just follow the pencil line. And then just tidy that up. because what happens is you'll get little bits of unpainted space where the parallel lines haven't met and then little moments where they do meet and that's all right too. And then I'll just do a little bit of the darker green just where it sits behind that flower too, just sort of acting as a bit of shadow. I added one more stem because I thought it might be fun to um, to place in uh, a sort of budding scabiosa that hasn't flowered yet. So what I've just done with that stem mix is just create a little sort of broad cup. And whilst that's drying, we can get back to our actual scabiosa flowers. So with my four tenths brush, what I want to do is create these little domes with some unpainted space. In that green gold area, which is also helpfully marked out in pencil. Doesn't matter if some of them end up sort of bleeding into one another or touching. And then just sort of round them off nicely towards the base. And then I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. Well, that's a very little bit of sap green. I want just a, a tiny bit of a, a shady colour. So that's a bit of moon glow. Just getting that in there, knocking it back a fraction, and a little bit of sap green. We just want a slightly shadier green to come in with. And you can see it just defines those little bobbles just that little bit. So to finish off, we just need a stronger darker green. So a bit more sap green into this mix and a bit more moon glow as well. It's gonna really be a, a sort of shadow. So I'm getting a little bit of it and I'm gonna place it on, on the stems there. Just where they're coming out from underneath but also with this one here is I'm going to add it as a sepal as well which is coming upwards and it can add a leaf 
or two. And there you have your scabiosis. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support, because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And of course, if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we will see you again next time. Bye.